Hey, Phantom Maniacs. I am live on May the 4th on Star Wars Day, and uh, we're going to take a look at some Star Wars toys and also uh, talk about what's going on with Star Wars right now because it's, it's, the toy situation is not great. Uh, tomorrow night we'll be recording... Uh, let's see, can I turn this around? Do we even want me to turn this around? There we go. Okay, so uh, tomorrow night we'll be recording an episode about the final season of Clone Wars. And even though we're going to talk about it on the episode, a question that got brought up was what was one figure you would want to see from that final season? And we'll talk about that tomorrow night. But it got me thinking about how lacking and about how bad the toy line is right now because... You know, I don't know what's the point. What's the point of speculating on that? Because Hasbro isn't delivering uh, full lines or full sets of anything. You get half the figures are 3.75 inch, half the figures are 6 inch. Uh, you don't get a full set of anything. You don't get every character from anything in any line. Uh, if you look at Rise of Skywalker and all the interesting new characters that came out, or, or that were featured in that movie, we haven't gotten any kind of satisfying collection based on Rise of Skywalker. We don't have... We've got a few characters from The Mandalorian, and they're all split up across different sizes. It's it's a mess, and it's not fun to collect anymore because there you can't rely anymore on having any kind of uh, completeness with anything. And uh, so my intent was to sit down and take a look at some vintage collection stuff, which I'm going to do, and that's fine. But it just got me thinking about as much as the product quality is very good, the lines are not great right now. But I'm going to flip this back around, and we're going to take a look at some vintage collection stuff that's just sitting here and has been sitting here. And the reason it's been sitting here is because my enthusiasm for Star Wars toys in general just isn't what it once was. Uh, actually, over here you can see, uh, check out that Jabba's Palace. There's one right there. And then you might, yeah, you can see it kind of in the back there. There's the other one. I'm going to hook these two together at some point for my display. Uh, so that's, that's, I open that up. You can go to the Needless Things podcast YouTube channel and check out the unboxing for that. Uh, there's my cool Star Wars rug that I really love. Um, so yeah, go to the YouTube channel, subscribe, check out the unboxing of Jabba's Palace because you can get it for clearance at Walmart now. Well, at some Walmarts. Some Walmarts have it for like 50 bucks or whatever still. Some Walmarts have it for 15 or less, which is what I paid for that one. Uh, it's a it's a really cool piece. If if you want a little more personality on your shelf, go for it. Uh, and as you can see right here, uh, my vintage Joes still need a home. They are actually gonna go. Uh, you might yeah. You can't really see it from this angle, but they're the Joe shelves are over there. They're the white ones. And then to the left of those white ones are some black shelves that I had to expand the GI Joe stuff. So I'm gonna take down the poster that's above those and make that all shelves. And then behind me, now let's see, uh, that is the Star Wars collection, and that needs to be adjusted also. Uh, I need to maybe lower those shelves a little bit or something. So that's one of the first looks I've given at the Phantom Zone toy room here. So we're going to take a look. Uh, uh, also, clearance. A store exclusive. Uh, I got it for either nine or eleven dollars. I don't remember. It was a set I was pretty excited about and haven't opened up yet because I, just the thrill isn't what it once was. Uh, those Luke faces were very. The paint on them was very questionable. I honestly don't think it's a bad likeness. He looks goofy, but uh, isn't terrible. Those double jointed elbows, however are terrible. Uh, but I really mainly wanted the backpack because I've got a better Dagobah Luke that I can use that doesn't look quite so weird. Uh, got a creepy little Yoda 
And then a Vader, who I believe his head comes off and he's got the Luke face underneath. I'll find out whenever I open this thing up. Probably won't be an unboxing, uh, but, uh, you know, it'll be fun to open up and play with. I need to go ahead and get it done. Uh, we've got this great three-pack of skiff guards that... Here's my issue with this. some of this stuff is the packaging is so cool. And, and feels so nostalgic that it's actually a little hard for me to break into it. But obviously, I've got some, uh, I've got some skiffs up there, and I've got the uh, sail barge up there. So I need some more dudes to man those vehicles. And this was, as far as I know, was never in stores. It was only available on Hasbro Pulse, Amazon. May, no, I don't think it was even on Target. I think it was just Hasbro Pulse and Amazon. So it's a really cool three-pack. Uh, they're carted inside of that box, which makes, uh, honestly, that's the root of why I haven't opened some of this stuff up, is this packaging is just so nostalgic. Look at that. Look at those great uh, colors behind those guys in the assortment. So it's hard for me to mess up this packaging because it just looks so neat. Uh, and then we get to the actual vintage collection figures. Uh, these are mostly the new ones. I don't buy the reissues because why would you do that? I loved this Stormtrooper. I wish we had gotten more figures of him. I don't really understand why, but I sure do miss the days where you could troop build uh, for a reasonable price. For 13 bucks a piece, uh, troop building is not practical anymore. But back in the day, as you can see, well, as you can sort of see, I've got troops and troops and troops. Uh, you know, squadrons of four were common. I, I would buy four uh, of the same figure or four of similar type figures to go together in squads, and it was no big deal. But now it's just, it costs too much. It's, it's prohibitive. Uh, let's see here. Oh, this, okay, now this one I was genuinely excited about. And granted, you can walk into any store now and buy them. I haven't seen them on clearance yet, but... This was one that I had to grab as soon as I saw, because this, to me, like, even before the new Marvel comics started, and this is basically what Luke wears in them, this, uh, when I was a kid, the Dagobah Fatigues Luke was, was the Luke that I used the most. Uh, once Jedi Luke came out, uh, he was, he was the go-to figure, but... I think prior to Jedi was when I did the most playing with my Star Wars toys because that was before G.I. Joe came out and supplanted Star Wars for me. Uh, but this is a cool... Like, this is what Adventurer Luke could look like. Granted, you take that little metal off, but, like, that's... I like this look for Luke a lot. Uh, let's see here. Back when Rise of Skywalker came out and we did get some new figures... Sith Jet Trooper. I At the time, I didn't really want the Jet Trooper. I just wanted a regular Sith Trooper. But, having seen the movie and liking the gimmick jetpack thing, now I'm glad I've got a Jet Trooper. He's really cool. Tons of cool detail. Looks great. Uh, great figure. Great new figure with a couple of weapons. I dig him. Good job on that one. Like I said... Uh, the quality of these is not in question at all. It's the the way they make the assortments and split things up between the lines. For example, this Knight of Ren, and then in the Black Series, the 6-inch scale, you have one of the other Knights of Ren. So what's sucking the fun out of collecting here is we don't know if they'll ever complete the Knights of Ren, and to be honest, at this point, I'm not as immersed in Star Wars mythology as I once was. So even knowing how many Knights of Ren there are, or what their names are, besides Halberd guy, uh, or I guess that's a Force Halberd, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm not as invested in that way. And part of it's just that I'm getting older. Part of it's that the toy line has been so inconsistent for so long. Uh but it is annoying and disappointing that who knows if we'll ever have a complete set of this of Kylo Ren's squad. So it, it's discouraging from making me want to collect anything. 
Uh, I grabbed this Han and Carbonite. Oh, no, wait. This is the one. Okay. So this one is the one that came with the Jabba's Palace Diorama. It's the same one that's over there. I've got two because I bought two dioramas. Uh, I should probably plan to flip this one. Not that it'll be worth anything, but you never know on eBay. And then there's the Yak Face uh, that came with the Jabba's Palace. There he is right there. So, or whatever. I'll keep those in the stack. All right. We, now we've got another Skiff Guard. We've got Klaatu. And you may think to yourself, well, hey, uh, earlier today on YouTube, you put up a video where you showed us a Klaatu figure. And you are correct, I did. Now it was a different character from this guy. And different, look at this, from all of these guys. So right here, I've got four members of Jabba's staff that I need to open up and get onto that sail barge up here. And I just haven't done it yet. Uh, again, partially because of the packaging, partially because Hasbro is killing my enthusiasm for collecting their toys. Uh, Selt Marae. Now, here's the fun story with this one. Is a different version of him, of Yak Face, came with that sail barge up there. But it had all the same accessory. I, well, it had that same uh, force pike, and then like a glass, I think, and then a coin, one of the power of the force coins or power of the Jedi coins, whatever it is. But I sold it for two hundred and thirty bucks, I think. So I I paid for almost half of the sail barge by selling the figure that came with it. And I just bought this one because I don't care about that packaging or that version of this figure. So I've got the same figure with the same force pike that I can put in the sail barge. But I made a shit ton of money um, selling the one that came with the sail barge. Uh, hey, what's going on, Sci-Fi Explosion? Uh, thanks for stopping by. So yeah, I've, I've got the figure, and that's all that matters to me. I do not need the packaging or the drinking glass, because I've got a ton of the drinking glasses uh, back here. In, well, you can't really see it, but uh, that's the cantina back there, and I've got a lot of those little glasses, so that was no big loss for me. Uh, Death Star Gunner. I don't really have any attachment to these guys, and I don't see a Death Star playset coming anytime soon. But he does look cool. I like his wacky helmet with the antenna, uh, the Imperial logo. Like, it, it is a very cool look. He's going to stand on the shelf, kind of looking like a doofus because he doesn't have a Death Star from which to gun. But he's still cool. He's an Imperial troop. I'm happy to have him. Uh, it's just, like I said, the quality of these figures is great. It's the way that they're spreading them across the different scales that's kind of killing my enthusiasm for the line. But it's nothing about how they're making them. Okay, now this was an exciting one for me because I really loved this look for Luke. Uh, that's kind of a... I think the sculpt is great and the paint is weak. I feel like he got out right before they started the new, uh, whatever the digital painting process is that they're using now that's turning out such incredible-looking uh, heads, this guy didn't quite make it in. So we have another instance of a great sculpt and likeness marred by a not-great paint job. But cool Luke. I like this idealization of old Jedi Luke. Uh you know, to me, this is sort of expanded universe Luke, the, the post-Jedi uh, galaxy-traveling Luke that we all wanted, or at least that I wanted, uh, that we never got from the movies. But, you know, that's okay, because we've got a cool-looking figure of him here. Uh, then we've got R2-D2. Uh, the fun thing about R2-D2 figures is there will never be an end to variations on R2, because it's just different different degrees of how far he got stuck up somebody's butt. Uh, his his deco, he's got some nice filth on there. This is, I would, I guess this is pretty much Dagobah R two. He looks that dirty, but I don't know if maybe they just went a little crazy 
and he's supposed to be the beginning of episode four R2. Uh, I don't see a restraining bolt on there, so it's not the, like, post-Jawa version. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one. Let's look at his cohorts in this assortment, and that tells us absolutely nothing about which R2 this is supposed to be. Uh, so, if, if I was setting it on the shelf and I had a Dagobah-themed shelf, I'd probably stick him in there because he's that degree of dirty. All right, we're getting towards the end here, you guys. Uh, oh, Zori Bliss. I loved this character. What what little bit of her we got. Uh, great old school, like pulpy sci-fi look. Very, very like Flash Gordon. Uh, I, I love the design. Cool figure. Kind of big holsters, but that's okay. The six-inch scale figure is better, obviously, but... With my three and three quarter inch collection, I had to have this cool character to go on the shelf. You know, hopefully, someday I'll get a Poe Dameron to go with her. Uh, I mean, I've got a Poe, but it's not the one from Rise of Skywalker, and it's he's not wearing what he was interacting with her in. Uh, we don't have any looks from the Zori Bliss segment of Rise of Skywalker, which is really unfortunate, and again, is the problem that Hasbro has right now, is they're incapable of putting out what I think of as a consistent, interesting wave where it's themed to a movie or a scene or it's something that compels me to want the entire wave. I miss those days. Uh, let's see, you got Ceremonial Leia. Uh, very cool. Pretty good likeness. Pretty good paint right there. Uh, this is an excellent Leia figure, and it's a, it's a redo. I've got one very, very similar to this on the shelf, but... Uh, nowhere near the quality of that scan and that sculpt. Really great Leia figure. I like this one. It's very, it's very pretty. And I don't often describe action figures as pretty, but this one is. And the cool thing is, she comes with a medal that is going to go on Chewbacca. So that's I, I like that as well. Very cool. Nice figure. Uh, looks good in the box. I kind of wish I'd bought a couple of these because I did find them a couple of times. I don't think they got down to clearance, although the rest of this wave... Well, some of the rest of this wave has. Um, but if I see another one, I might grab another one just to keep this nice... You know, that great Carrie Fisher picture, that really nice likeness. That That's one that I might throw into a, a case and just hang on the wall. Getting down to the final two. What have we got here? I don't even remember. Oh, okay. So this one's dumb. This this is my bad. This was stupid. I love Lando Calrissian, and I particularly love Lando in disguise. I popped huge for that moment in Solo where they pull that uh, that costume out. Um, when I was a kid, this Lando, the Kenner one, got so much play. I just really dug. I mean, he had the removable helmet, which was a huge deal. But I just, I love this Lando. I really do. And I saw this one in Walmart one morning. And it was when this wave, is this the same wave? No, this is, uh, all right, this is that wave. Had just hit. And I was like, oh my gosh, cool, new Lando. And I grabbed it and brought it home. And I saw, not only do I already have this Lando... I also have the deleted scene Lando that's this Lando with a bunch of extra soft goods and stuff. So I did not need this Lando at all. And I actually, looking at him now, as much as I loved the Kenner figure when I was a kid, maybe I just throw this one into a case too and throw him up on the wall just for nostalgia of like loving this look, loving this costume. Uh, but maybe not, because I've got him on the shelf too. Or actually, no, I think he's... In one of these skiff scenes, my son set up little scenes up here in the skiffs. I believe he's on one of those right now. Uh, but then the Sandstorm Lando is up on the shelf. And then right here, uh, I went ahead and grabbed this Luke. Even though I've got a couple of pilot Lukes, this one I think has a really, really nice likeness. I dig it a lot. And right now, one of my pilot Lukes is up in his X-Wing. Uh... One, I don't know if you can see it from here, maybe a little bit. You can see some Rebel pilots up on the shelf up there. 
I've got a whole squadron of just rebel pilots and Luke's in one of those, but none of the ones I have have that kind of nice likeness. So I'll probably pull the one off of the shelf up there and replace it with this one and uh, stick that one in another vehicle or something maybe. So uh, let's see, what else have we got over here? Anything else interesting? I've got a bowl of Hoth stuff that needs to find its way into this display right over here. Uh, with my ad at just kind of stick them on this big shelf over here. Uh, we've got the new retro figures that I found at Walmart the other day. I uh, did not find a Boba Fett, but I got the rest of the set there. I don't know if you haven't seen them yet. Maybe this will be interesting for you. Uh, I love these. I know some people are opposed to them. I just think they're so neat. As I've mentioned a couple of times, I don't know how long ever. Hey, Victoria's Cantina is here. What's up? Um, so I love these. I think they're great. The sculpts are not the same. So it's not like these are going to get mistaken for Kenner's at any point. Uh, I dig the boxes. I like the packaging on them. I just think they're really neat. I, I, I love nostalgia and these are so nostalgic for me. Um, I hate that they're Walmart exclusives because Walmart exclusive is pretty much the worst combination of words a toy collector can hear, but you know, what are you going to do? But as you can see, these are these are a decent bit, like even to somebody who's not as into it as I once was, these are visibly different from the Kenners, so I don't mind them. Uh, I wish it didn't have that big giant retro collection in three different languages right there. That takes away from it a lot, but still, very cool. At some point I might open these up if I can get a second set. I'd like to keep a set carded and open a set up. Look at that great... That accessory changed everything back in the day. Because obviously, you know, the first Kenner figures had the little slide-out lightsabers. And even as a kid, I never really liked those. Like that slide-out effect. I get it. It was neat. But I, I never... I was never sold on it. So when we got this separate lightsaber, I loved it. It changed the game for me. And as I was saying a minute ago... This became my default Luke for most of my playtime with Star Wars back in the day. This this Luke and Bespin fatigues, as I think he might have been called at the time, or maybe it was just Luke Skywalker Bespin. Um, this was the one. This was the Luke. Uh, let's see here. Oh, look at great little Yoda. Look how clean he is. Uh Geimer stick is orange snake. Uh, what a weird, great little figure, though. That nice, soft goods. Uh, you know, for as tiny as he is, you look at his size and you're like, well, he shouldn't cost the same as the rest of them. But then you look and consider he's got his belt, he's got his soft goods, he's got his couple of accessories. Like, this guy's loaded with stuff. And he's Yoda. He's great. I love it. I love it. Uh, and then, last one, since I did not find a Boba Fett, still have not found any Boba Fetts. Ah, uh, Lando. I mentioned earlier, I love Lando Calrissian. Uh, I believe this cape, I wish I had one sitting next to me for reference, but I believe this cape is a different shade, like a very different shade of powder blue from the original Kenner cape. Uh, I'm not positive about that, but just a really slick, great-looking figure. Uh, he was so different in the original toy line. I really appreciated that he seemed set apart, I guess, from the rest of the heroes, which he very much is in the movie. But but as I've said before on the podcast, you know, when I was a kid, these figures were what we told the stories with and what we knew the stories from. We couldn't just watch Star Wars whenever we wanted. Uh, we had to wait for it to come on, like, Sunday movie night or eventually when VHS became a thing. We would, you know, we got the VHSs. But, you know, when I, when these toys were active in my life... I had probably seen the Star Wars movies maybe once each, a couple times on TV. But for the most part, these toys are where it lived in my head. So they they were how I told the stories and how I knew the stories best. Uh, and then over here, we just got bags of the first. I've got the first wave of retros. I've got... Okay, if you haven't seen this one, first of all... If you haven't seen this Grand Moff Tarkin, that means you don't have the Escape from Death Star game. And since it is widely available, any target you go in has like 20 of them. Go buy it right now because it's so much fun. Um, 
if you don't want the figure, that's fine. It doesn't matter. It's not part of the original collection, so it's kind of a weird one-off thing. I'm happy to have it because it's cool to have what that Grand Moff Tarkin might have looked like, uh, and I really dig it. But don't buy it for this figure. Buy it for the game. Uh, once we're out of this horrible nonsense that we're in right now, get together with some friends, play Escape from Death Star. Uh, me and the family played it like three times in a row the other night. It's so much fun. Uh, matter of fact, there is my second copy right there because I wanted to have one just to keep in the box. And again, yeah, I could have waited. I'm sure it'll go on clearance for $6 at some point. But I don't care because I wanted to have one to open and I wanted to have one just to keep nice and fresh and pristine because it's just, uh, that was a game that I played with my grandparents. My granny got it at a garage sale when I was very, very young. And every time we'd go up to North Carolina, um, we would play Escape from Death Star. And it looks it looks weird and it looks oddly complicated and simple at the same time. And it is. Uh, it's such a fun game, though. I'm serious, you guys. If next time you're in Target, just grab it. It is well worth your 20 bucks for the game alone. And then the nice uh, Grand Moff Tarkin you get inside is, is just like an extra perk. Uh, let's see here. Like I said, these are just the rest of the first series of retros. I'm not going to go through those because if you haven't seen them at this point, uh, I think you can still get them from Entertainment Earth. And if you have any interest whatsoever, I recommend you do because they're fun. Uh, but I just I went through the Empire ones. You get it. They're, they're cool not quite reproductions of the original line. And I'll tell you right now, if Hasbro decides they want to recreate the entire vintage line via this retro series, I'm in. And and not only am I in, I'm in for a set carded and uh, opening up and putting on the shelf a whole set too. I'm, I'm down with that. So anyway, that's just a look at what's going on with Star Wars right now. Just to recap, I think Hasbro is way too splintered. I think they're splitting things up between scales way too much, and it's kind of killing my enthusiasm for the modern line. But there will always be neat things from Star Wars to collect, and that's what I love about it. So I, I, will, uh, I will always be a Star Wars collector. It's just going to be a matter of uh, what, what can get my attention and what can keep me interested. And right now, unfortunately the, the vintage collection and the black series are so splintered that my interest is waning and moving on to yo, Joe, just like it did in 1983. Uh, thanks for watching you guys. Please check out the needless things podcast every single Friday and go over to the YouTube channel. I just put up a really cool star Wars unboxing, uh, that I think is pretty neat and unique. Uh, everyone, may the 4th be with you. Happy Star Wars Day.